hi guys welcome back to my channel how are you guys doing i hope you're doing well today thanks very much for joining me today and if you haven't subscribed do consider subscribing and if you hit on the notification bell you get notification whenever i post my videos so this news broke last week reporting that um another nigerian woman has been arrested in jeddah airport saudi arabia for allegedly smuggling cocaine to saudi this news came from the senior special assistant to the president on diaspora mrs abike dabri area she was saying that um, this is coming shortly after another nigerian lady was, was executed in the same country for a related offense and i'd already done that video and i have not posted it when this now broke again that another woman has been arrested for allegations of trafficking drugs and while we are still talking about this 20 nigerians are on death row and eight nigerians have been executed in saudi arabia this year alone and another woman this one that has just been arrested is called wahid sumade she was arrest arrested in Jeddah airport with cocaine uh, about 1.138 kg of cocaine kilos of cocaine this is in addition to the number of people that are already on death row and those have been executed this year she advised travelers especially those boarding egypt and ethiopia airlines to always be watchful with their luggage noticing that some some airline operators in some cases conspire with drug barons to insert drugs in their bags without the travelers knowledge describing the act as pathetic according to sahara report she says that um according to the saudi interior uh, minister a nigerian woman two pakistani men and a yemeni man were charged for drug trafficking offenses and executed having been found guilty and she was saying that um, this brought the number of people that were executed in saudi arabia to 53 this year and she also said that um, there are cases whereby these people did not commit the offense which i find really really intriguing and she was appealing to the saudi authorities to please um to please make the trials uh, fair and open to ensure that justice is done um and she was i mean what um mrs dabri is, is, is practically saying is that um even if somebody is going to die that you will know that they are dying for an offense that they committed and she's appealing to all nigerians who are going to saudi arabia to obey the laws of the land and to check what is considered as a drug offense in that country because you know that saudi arabia is uh, is like it's an islamic country they have sharia laws and that is the headquarters of anything islam in this world this is where thousands of nigerians go to yearly for their you know annual uh, uh, pilgrimage so most of them will just travel to those places without finding out about what the laws are relating to offenses or what is considered as drug because what this lady is saying in this article is that even things as ordinary as cola nuts is considered as a drug for those of you who don't know what cola nut is cola nut is like a nut that is you know is in africa that we grow it in west africa i don't know if it's in other parts of africa but it's it's like um i don't know what to call cola nuts well, I call it a snack. It's not a snack. It's like something that people eat, just like any kind of nut that you eat. That is for they mostly they use it for traditional purposes, for like you know traditional engagements or in those days people used to use it to entertain. Like when you have an elder or a chief that visits you, you present them with kola nut. I know it's very. I mean, kola nut is high. is held in high regard in the, in the eastern part of Nigeria where they consider it as, you know is an item that signifies you know culture you know tradition they break it at any um event any traditional event marriages celebration you know um villages ceremonies and things like that so to my knowledge i mean I, i've eaten kola not before in my life and i don't think it intoxicates or anything like that but saudi officials are saying that 
it is a drug. So she's appealing to anybody that is going to that country to be very, very careful to make sure that you check what these people consider as a drug and what is not a drug. And she was also appealing to them um, to treat some of the cases with some form of leniency. Ah, this one is hard though. It's really, really hard, especially the fact that what she was saying about people being convicted and they're not giving fair trials and, you know, death sentence, which is the ultimate punishment, giving your life. And, you know, I don't know. Me personally, I would have a problem in any country where there's no rule of law and where there's no democracy. I mean, to live there, especially. Visiting, yeah, maybe, but to live there, I don't know. But we all know as things are, the condition of, of the country makes a lot of people desperate to get out. I won't really blame people who are looking for escape to go to any country. I mean, we find Nigerian countries that you've never even heard of before that, you, that most people will not even recognize. You find Nigerians in places like that. All because everybody is looking for a way out of the, of, of the, of the situation of things in Nigeria. I love, you know, economic migrants traveling all over the world looking for greener pastures, which is what human beings do. I mean, it's not only Africans that travel. I know sometimes when they talk about immigration in this part of the world, they make it sound as if it's only Africans that will ever go to other places looking for, you know, um, greener pastures. People all over the world travel for one reason or the other. So let's just get that straight. It's, it's not only Africans that travel for economic purposes or travel to other places looking for greener pastures. It is, it's, it's a word, it is done all over the world and it's been happening since time immemorial. Now, Saudi Arabia is a country that is, um, is uh, they, have a, they don't have a, a democracy, they don't have, um, um, I don't know if they have a, constitu a constitution, but I know is they have a monarchy. It's governed by a monarchy, and if the trial that these people have been, I mean, the way they are tried is not open, it's not transparent because there's no rule of law, there's no democracy, there's no three arm, arms of government like we know it in, you know, in, in 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 the West here, and then I don't know what kind of trial these people have been given. Honestly, I don't know. It's really, really scary to know that somebody is going to be tried in a court that is not open, that is closed. We don't know if they have, you know, if they've given recourse to them to have representation in any form or in any shape. If they have legally, if the people that have been accused of these offenses have been given any kind of, you know, legal any kind of legal representation or they've been given access to lawyers or if they even know what the trial if if they are aware of the legal process and you know how they have been tried because what she's saying now is that the trials are not fair that's what she says i'm sure before she'll come out to make a statement saying that some of these people have not committed these offenses or they've been charged wrongly then there must be some evidence to support the fact that some of these charges are bogus and which will be you know fundamentally an abuse of human rights we all know what happens in this country the other day there was you know this journalist who is from saudi arabia you know assassinated he was killed and nothing to the best of my knowledge nothing happened about that man's case till today so what i'm just going to say is that if you are in those parts of the world as an african or a Nigerian. Be careful the way you conduct your business there. I hear that you can't look at women there. You cannot even ask, ask a woman out, you know, because women are not allowed. Their women are not allowed to go out in public. They have to be escorted by men. I mean, in Saudi Arabia, women recently got the right to drive. These are the kind of, you know, is 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 a very strict Islamic country whereby Sharia law is operated a hundred percent. They don't care whether you are a Muslim or you're not a Muslim, this is not good news at all. How can in, within three months, we don't only three months in this year, January to March, and eight Nigerians are already being slaughtered. And also, not encouraging people to engage in criminal activities, you guys know I always condemn that. If you are one of those who wants to get rich quick, 
yeah and somebody gives you a bag and say come and help me take this bag to go to saudi arabia you better be careful i know you're a lot of young people and you know will be victim they fall victim into this trap because of again everybody wants to get rich quick you want to get that money so you can live the lifestyle for the gram hmm. put your material according to your size and do not go and engage in any criminal activities that you end up losing your life because that gets rich quick scheme that you engage in might end up being the thing that will take your life you will not even be alive to live the to live the large life that you are looking for and desperation is not an option you can't say oh i'm desperate that's why i did it because these people hmm, they don't play they know they play they know if they catch you they know they play for those places they know they look per the eye <laughs> It's not a court that you will have jury. They will say, okay, 12 people will sit in the jury and go and decide your case. You don't know. Maybe it's only one judge that will listen to your case and the judge is the one that will determine your fate. Maybe they will not even give you a lawyer to represent you. So think twice before you go to those countries. And if you have to, be very, very careful that you don't take anything that will be constituted as a drug. Check what the country says. Meanwhile, five, five Nigerians were arrested for allegedly robbing a bureau de change in Dubai for the sum of about 200 million. That's about 2.3 million dirham. Um, and this question was posed to Mrs. Dabry and she said that uh, the act was disgraceful and has brought shame to the country and families of the culprit. She listed the five names as Chimunaya, Emmanuel Ozo, Benjamin Wachuku Aja, Kinsley Ikena Ngoka, Tochuku Alausa, Chile Mika Ndunagu. The five boys, she says, are a disgrace to this country and an embarrassment. So if the UAE decides to hand to go hard or to be hard on Nigerians, then they will complain that they are hard on us. But we'll continue to say that one bad apple should not spoil the whole bunch just cut your coat according to your size cut your material according to your size and do not go and engage in any criminal activities that you end up losing your life because that gets rich quick scheme that you engage in might end up being the thing that will take your life you will not even be alive to live the to live the large life that you are looking for and desperation is not an option. You can't say, oh, I'm desperate. That's why I did it. Because these people, hmm, they don't play. They know they play. They know if they catch you, they know they play. For those places, they know they look per the eye. <laughs> so, just going to leave you here today. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll talk to you guys in my next one. Give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, you ensure that you support me by subscribing. And I will talk to you in my next one. Thank you very much for watching. I love you. Bye-bye. It's fake news. Original Batman. Oh. Lego. Oh.